Hi everyone, welcome to another Stitch Study Monthly with me, Laura, and this month's stitch, we're doing a Tunisian crochet stitch, something a little bit different. And we're actually gonna be learning the Tunisian puff stitch, which is so beautiful and surprisingly easier than you think. So how do we create the Tunisian puff stitch design? It's a beautiful design here shown on my water bottle carrier, which is an exclusive member plus uh, crochet pattern on my website. So do check out member plus benefits on there. And it's also used, the Tunisian puff stitch has also been used for the straps. So it's really lovely for creating bag straps as well. So, but for this tutorial, I'm just gonna be grabbing some chunky bulky weight yarns. This is a yarn weight of about six, five or six. Uh, but you can use any yarn that you like. Uh, with that, I'm using a six millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. Now, if you're new to Tunisian crochet, a Tunisian crochet hook is kind of like a knitting needle, uh, but it has a crochet hook at the end. And a straight one is fine for this pattern and also for the water bottle carrier. But we're going to work to a unit of four plus one. So let's just zoom the camera in slightly so you can see a bit clearer. So I'm gonna do a little slip knot to begin and work to a unit of four to begin. So chain one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna do another four. One, two, three, and four. Let's do another four. One, two, three, and four, I'll do one more four. One, two, three, and four. So once you've worked your unit of four, however long you want to make your project, we're just going to add one at the end. So add an extra one at the end. And this is when we start to do Tunisian crochet. So we're gonna start off by yarning over and we're gonna skip the first three chains. So don't count the loop on your hook. Skip one, skip two, skip three. Then in the fourth chain, we put our hook, bring the yarn through, and you wanna bring up a loop. So we're doing puff stitches. So bring up a little loop, and we're gonna do that three more times. So yarn over, go into the same chain, bring up a loop, and again, yarn over into the chain, bring up the loop. One more time, yarn over, into the chain, bring up a loop. So you end up with this nice big cluster of loops on your hook. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna yarn over and again, skip three, skip one, skip two, skip three. Then in the fourth chain, we do the same thing again. Bring up a loop and repeat that three more times. Yarn over into the chain, bring up a loop, twice more. Then once more, yarn over. And there we go, that's our second clump of loops. And we do that all the way to the end. So repeat that to the end. So always yarn over before you go into your chain. Skip three, one, two, three. Then in the fourth chain, work into the fourth chain, bring up a loop. Do that three more times, yarn over into the chain, bring up a loop, yarn over into the chain, bring up a loop, one more time, yarn over, into the chain, <laughs> into the chain, bring up a loop. It's our next group of loops. And we're nearly near, nearly near the end. So again, yarn over, skip three, into the fourth chain, bring up a loop, three more times, yarn over, into the chain, twice more, yarn over, into the chain, and then once more yarn over into the chain, bring up a loop. And then you should be left with one chain at the end. This is that extra chain. And what we're gonna do there is we're gonna create a foundation chain along the edge. It's a really nice edge for this stitch. And to do that, if you're struggling to get into your chain, just move your stitches, your loops down. Go into that last chain and bring up a loop. So just bring up, just chain one basically. And there we go. So once you've done that, we now need to do our return row back to the beginning. So like I said, we're gonna create that foundation chain. So we're just gonna pull through that first loop only. That creates a foundation chain on the edge. Then what we want to do is we want to split this group 
of loops in half. So we want to work under the first four. So we're going to yarn over, pull through the loop here, and then four of these. So let's come through that one first. And it helps to turn your hook down, give it a wiggle. Come through the first four. I think we've still got one more. Okay, so we're halfway through. Then we want to split that with a little chain one. So we're just going to chain one like so, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through the remainder of that clump of stitches, those last four. Okay, then we're in the middle of our clumps and we don't do a chain one, we're just going to yarn over and go straight through this loop and four of these. So come straight through that one and four of these. Give it a wiggle and then come up. And in between our clump of loops, <laughs> sure it's a technical term, clump of loops, we're going to do a chain one. So a chain one, because we want to create a chain one space in between. Then we yarn over and come through the remaining loops. Okay, then we don't do a chain one. We want to come through this loop and four of these. So yarn over, come through that one, and four of these. Come up through the middle. Then we do a chain one to create a chain one space. And then we yarn over, come through the remaining loops of that clump. Okay, same again. We're going to yarn over, no chain one, we come straight through that loop and four of these. Okay, do a chain one, then come through the remaining loops. There'll actually be five at the very end here. And then you're back at the beginning and we're going to secure that with a chain one. So we're going to create chain ones this end and this end. And there we go, that is the beginning of our Tunisian puff stitch. So how do we do the second row? What we're going to do is very similar. We're just going to bring up a little loop to begin, yarn over. Then find your chain one space in between. We we'll go into there and do the same thing. Bring the yarn up, create a loop. Do that three more times, yarn over to the chain one space. Bring up a loop, yarn over to the chain one space. One more time. And that's our next clump. And we do that all the way across, so yarn over first, find your next chain one space in between these clumps. Hook into there, bring up a loop, do that three more times. One, two, and three. So that's our next clump, <laughs> yarn over. Find the next chain one space in between your puff stitches. Hook into there, bring up a loop, three more times, yarn over to the chain one space, twice more. Once more, and there we go. And then we've got one uh, set of puff stitches left, so remember to yarn over first, go into the chain one space, Bring up a loop, do that three more times. One, two, three. Okay, then when, when you're at the end, we wanna find that foundation chain we made on the end. So this little stitch here. And this is kind of like the uh, foundation chain stitching. So if you're familiar with that, you'll find this easy, but you wanna find that stitch on the end onto both loops like so and bring the yarn through there and that's the end of the first the next row and it should look like this hopefully so for our return row it's the same as the previous return row we're going to create our foundation chain on the end which is basically a chain one here so that'll be the next chain we work into and then we want to work through this loop and four of these so we're going to yarn over, come through that loop, and four of these into the middle. Which is about here. Okay. Then we need to create our chain one space. So chain one. Then come through the remaining loops in between. Okay, and we do that again. So we're going to come through this loop and four of these. Yarn over, come through there, and four of these. Then we need to make our chain one space. 
then yarn over, come through the rest of the stitches. And again, we come through this loop and four of these, so yarn over, come through here and four of these, create a chain one space, and then yarn over, come through the rest of the loops. Then our last clump of stitches, we come through this loop and four of these, do a chain one, and come through, yarn over, come through the remaining loops. Then secure with a chain one on the end. Okay, and that's our next row. And that's basically what you repeat those, the second row uh, forward and backwards. We just need to repeat that. So I'll show you one more time. So bring up a little loop to begin. Don't forget to yarn over. Sorry about the tapping. It's, it's like trying to do knitting tutorials. It's my hook. Find the chain one space, go into there, bring up a loop, do that three more times. One, yarn over, two, yarn over, and three. So that's our first clump of loops. Find the next chain one space, yarn over, don't forget to yarn over, go into there, bring up a loop, three more times. One, two, and three. So this is a double crochet puff stitch, really. So then the next chain one space, yarn over to the next chain one space, bring up a loop, three more times. One, two, and three. Okay, and the last one, don't forget to yarn over, chain one space, bring up a loop, do that three more times. One, two and three. Okay, then we find the foundation chain we made on the end. So that was the first one. This was the second one we made. So we want to just, if you struggle, just bring your stitches down. Go into there, you should go under two loops and bring the yarn through there. Okay, bring it up a little bit so it's not too tight. Then we're gonna do our reverse row again. So we don't forget our chain one on the end. We need to create our next foundation chain, very important. Then we come through this loop and four of these. Create our next chain one space. Yarn over through the remaining loops of that puff stitch. Same again, we come through this loop and four of these. Create a chain one space yarn over, come through the remaining loops. Same again, come through this loop, four of these, create a chain one space, yarn over through the remaining loops. And the last one, through this loop and four of these, create a chain one space, yarn over through the remaining loops and secure with a chain one. And there we go, that is our third row. So you would just repeat that over and over again and you would finish like this. So the finishing top would just be back at the beginning like this, which you can see on the water bottle here, creates a nice finish just like this. You don't need to do anything particularly to neaten it off or anything, it just looks lovely as it is. And there we go, I've just done a couple more rows so you can just see this really come together and it's such a beautiful, texture and something really fun to do, a uh, very unusual Tunisian stitch. And it will create a slight slantiness, but you can just pull it into shape, but it ends up still looking very beautiful, I think. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed learning a new stitch or it maybe even refreshed your memory from, maybe you've learned this before somewhere and uh, forgotten all about it. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's super fun to create. And like I said, a straight Tunisian crochet hook should be sufficient for most projects. Uh, unless you want to make blankets and things which you can get some extendable uh, Tunisian crochet hooks. So, um, and uh, like I also said, if you'd like to get my uh, water bottle Tunisian puff stitch pattern then do check out my member plus area on my website it's an exclusive pattern for member plus members 
And uh, I'd like to say a huge thank you as always to my Member Plus members for helping make all these tutorials happen. And I hope you're really enjoying the nice uh, area on the Member Plus area on my website where I really feel like we're taking a deeper look into crochet and connecting with you guys. It's been really lovely. So a huge thank you to you guys. But I will see you soon for some more crochet crafting fun. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.